Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host, Malak, here with my co-hosts, Khawaila, Inara, and Maria. Hey, salam alaikum. So, in honor of the spooky season and Halloween being on Saturday, we decided to dive into some spooky Islamic topics. Um, I feel like it's a side that nobody really talks about. It's kind of like a taboo. So we wanted to discuss a little about like hasad, some black magic, some jinn or jinn stories that we have to share. Um, and just kind of play around with the subject, I guess. Figure out what we know, what we don't know. Fill each other in on some things. But before we get into the scary side of things this episode, we have, well, Inara actually has some news that she'd like to share with our Modern Skeps fam. So Inara, take it away. So this morning, I actually just went and got braces. (gasps) (laughs) This is why I'm talking really weird. That's so scary. (laughs) <laughs> what is it? It is scary. Oh, you, oh my god, I cried because of how scary I look. And I'm like, oh, I look terrifying. <laughs> You're so dramatic. I look so bad. And I can't even, like, I don't even want to show you the braces from how bad they look. So I'm trying to cover up with my lips. So bear with me, Modern Scups fam, because I am not happy at all with how my braces look. I'm just hoping these, like, 18 months, hopefully shorter, will fly by because I just want my perfect teeth already. Um, this was not anything like I expected my mouth to look like. <laughs> I really don't. Not a, but nobody liked how they look in braces originally. It has, it's something that you have to get used to, honestly. It's so, so bad. Like, they look like normal braces. I don't know what you were expecting. No, mine don't look like normal braces. The thing is, I thought I was going to get a bracket on each tooth. I don't have a bracket on each tooth, so it looks a little weird. <laughs> and then I have, like, the self legating I believe they're called braces so like I don't have the bands around my mouth um even though these are supposed to be better the bands are ugly I feel like that's the ones that I'm like they just having fully braces looks better than just like the kind of spaced out and not like out there I don't know how to explain it it's just not (laughs) what I expected braces to look like because everybody gets the traditional braces and mine are not really the traditional braces (laughs) Um, and so it's not what I expected. I am having a hard time. Today was a little stressful and like overwhelming for me because I look a lot different than what I'm used to. It's okay, Nara. You've never been one to follow the masses. So <laughs> you're just, yeah. you're a trendsetter in every sense. Oh, yeah. Embrace, embrace the brace face. Yeah. It's like yeah, nice, brace- next month I see all of y'all with like braces. <laughs> <laughs> having braces is such an it. experience. So although... The talk of braces is very scary. (laughs) Um, We're just going to go ahead and dive into today's topic. But before we kind of get into the nitty gritty details of it, I kind of want to know what are things you guys knew before? Because I feel like my knowledge was very limited on gin and black magic and stuff like that. And even now, I feel like doing research and stuff, first of all, not all sources are really reliable. Something something sounded very sketchy on Google. (laughs) And I'm pretty sure something like tell you how to raise the gin or something. (laughs) Yeah, a lot. It was hard distinguishing between like Arab folklore and actual Uh Islamic knowledge on the topic. But like you mentioned earlier, I feel like it's not something that's so easily or readily talked about. But the second someone says it, everybody turns and wants to hear it's like and then they, they also start like reading their good on and stuff like just just by saying it you're like manifesting it somehow and like nobody wants to be around that you do i mean when you think of jen i feel like we like think about it as like the scary movies that like ghosts and like paranormal stuff that's happening mm-hmm. related to and so we're just assumed jen are all bad and they're out to get us and annoy us and possess us but that's not necessarily the case with all just yeah, so Jim, usually what I think of it is, uh, it reminds me of ghosts, but we learned at Universal how they're basically their own, like, type of creatures or type of beings mm-hmm. that could be Muslim, non-Muslim, they have their own lives, they're just like a different form, but yeah. it's so hard to wrap your head around that. Yeah. I think the scariest thing is that you can't see them, but they can see you. That's so Creepy. There could be a jinn right behind you. <laughs> well, isn't every person born with a jinn? Like, we got one? I thought it was a shaitan. Well, well shaitans are jinns. Yeah. 
Oh. Not all jinn are shaitan, but, but all, all shaitan are jinn. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's some Don't human children, just saying. There's some <laughs> evil human beings out there. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I feel like something that you hear more about in the community or when you're talking to, like, your khaltos in the community is hasad, though. Hasad is huge in the Arab community. I mean, I don't, I don't even think it's just Arab. I think it's um, Muslim community in general. And the Jewish is a huge topic. Okay, random. Randomly, this happened to me the other day. This uh, one of my classmates got um, asked to join a webinar and to give a speech, uh, a talk. And so she, when she was sharing that with our group, because we're working on a group project, she said she said something in uh, Hebrew, and I was like, "Oh, like what does that mean?" And she's like, "Oh, like um, no evil eye." And because they believe like, anything good I share or any news, they're afraid of somebody actually jinxing them. And I'm like, oh, so this seems like it's kind of across the board. Like even us, like we don't believe, like I feel like even American culture, right? like the evil eye, like I don't want you to jinx me. It. Yeah. When you yeah. jinx something. But yeah. I feel like we take it to a different level than like Western <laughs> culture. Like they say like, oh my God, you jinxed me as in like, okay. I feel like it's more of like, a joke or more of like a mundane no, I feel like we do the same thing like oh you just exited me like you okay but some people take it very seriously like some people take it said too seriously I mean well maybe I don't know if you could take it too seriously because it is actually a thing and we are supposed to read our mu'awadat every morning to keep hasid away because it's like an actual thing and something that I actually found interesting when I was first I guess learning about hasid I think at Universal is one you can accidentally exit something. Like, you can do it without the right intention. And two, you can exit yourself. Those are the two things I never understood <laughs> either. Like, that, if I'm actually happy for this person, how can I accidentally jinx it or exit that? No, yeah. because it stems from the thought of why, I think with jealousy, it's not just the, oh, I wish I could have that. Cause I think that's one aspect. Like everybody wishes they can mm-hmm. have other things, but it's more like, I don't think that person deserves to have it. I deserve it more. I should have it. And that's when I think you start crossing into the, the hasad thing. And how much times do we do it by accident where you're like, yeah. her, she's the one who got into like yeah. medical school, but her grades suck. She doesn't even work as hard as I do. Why did she get in? And I didn't. So it doesn't even it's not something you actively have to try and do. You could just do it by accident just because it's human nature, which is why we have to mm-hmm. fight against those types of thoughts. Yeah. And that's why usually the whole um, exiting yourself, that's why there are even gods you're supposed to say when you look in the mirror. Like, because it's an actual thing. And for some reason to me, that's like, that's so, it's such an oxymoron to like jinx yourself. Like, like oh, I look so beautiful yeah. today. Something goes wrong and it's like, okay, well, <laughs> the like, that. like wow i look good today and then like your eye pops up <laughs> yeah <laughs> you smudge your mascara across your eyebrow but that's why i how do you know it was hasad because i feel like sometimes it's weird to be like oh i think i i was like somebody had exited me so well nope. a lot of people get them confused too where if just something bad happened they're like oh it, it must have been hasad it's mm-hmm. like no dude relax it's just yeah and I know a lot of she, uh, sheikhs say that if science can explain something that's happening, then it's not hasad. So, for example, like mm-hmm. you get a sickness of some sort, where but let's say you were perfectly healthy and then all of a sudden get like kidney failure. I don't know. No, that's because a lot of times people think they're perfectly healthy, but that's, they're not addressing. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> no legit my one of my patients said that to me the other day she was like it was hasad i was perfectly fine and now all of a sudden i'm always sick and it's like lady no oh, it's like you have diabetes untreated <laughs> cholesterol you have no and the thing is like, like the thing growing on you for five years <laughs> like, no, it's, it wasn't that bad it wasn't that bad but it's funny because i had a white attending and she's like telling it to me she speaks english but she says this acid in, like an arabi but she also translates it in, in English. So he's like asking me about it. I was like, yeah, you know, the evil eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so no, but like, in general, sheikhs say if science or something can explain it, then it's usually not hasad. Yeah, it's I don't think you can. 
I don't think it's something that you can, at least not all instances, I don't think you can necessarily differentiate between hasad and just having a bad situation. Like, it's not something you could go and, like, get tested for or something. You know what I'm saying? It's very difficult to say it. But actually, I do know that if you do, if you feel like you're experiencing hasad or whatever, relationships just aren't working or you just feel like you're constantly working hard and nothing's happening for you or you're always anxious or something, you can actually go to your chef or there's other things that you can do. But like you can go where they recite specific ayat of the Quran, which I recently learned is called um, Rukia. Yeah, where they actually like will recite certain ayats for you. And then just depending on how you're feeling when you hear the ayat or the symptoms that you're experiencing, it can actually gauge if there's some type of evil eye on you. So, which is so crazy to me. <laughs> so weird. So, that's like, are, like specific special shield, right? Like, I don't think any yeah. shield can do it. It's like uh, people who specialize in that field. Yeah. So, hold on. Do you go to them at the masjid or do they come to your house and try to sense if there's any chesed in the household? Yeah. I've heard think- stories of that. Yeah, I have a story. Wait, first, I think you can do both. Like, I think they can do make a house visit if it's affecting, like, a family or something. Like, if you think it's the house or everybody in the house. Or if Wait, it's, like... How do you, you differentiate, like, hasad and sihr? I think a sheikh has to do that. I don't think you can do that. Because I feel like hasad... You mean in terms of definition? Yeah, like, hasad isn't just, like... I didn't... I mean, sihr is more, like, tying knots, right? And, like... Yeah. So, so let's wait. Let's differentiate. Let's yeah. differentiate the words. So hasad is more like evil eye, jealousy, envy, and sihir is more into the aspect of black magic, like dark magic, weird juju, you, like using you, people's you, hair. Yeah, like really not good. Which is crazy that it's actually true that someone ihsaded Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not ihsaded, mm-hmm. used used black magic. Mm-hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw a dream to him showing where the doll, there was a doll that had Muhammad sallallahu hair wrapped around it and it was oh, thrown in a well. And uh, they, ha- yeah, I know, isn't that crazy? And he, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi set some sahaba to go get it from this well and they had to undo the nas and while they did it, they had to read surah. Surah al-falaq and surah al-nas. Yeah, that are supposed to protect you from the evil eye and from hasad in general. Yeah. Yes. Okay, this whole Rukia thing reminds me of those, like, movies. What is it? Like, the exorcism? Mm. <laughs> Where, like, is, like... <laughs> the thing is, though, it can, like, people, individuals that do take part in sihir and, like, strong passage and stuff, like, it's really creepy stuff. Like, it is literally an exorcism because they're literally communicating with the jinn, with shaitan, like, they're trying to possess things, like, they're willing to give up parts of their soul. Like it's a really creepy thing where you probably need an exorcism to come back from something like that. And okay. this, I've heard some crazy stories. Like it's not, people are weird. They're so weird. I don't know. <laughs> What's but scary man. is it's the human that chooses to do the black magic. That's the mm-hmm. scary part. Like we always want to blame the jinn and like the jinn is the scary person, but no, in reality, like the human is the scary person. They're the ones that are asking the jinn to do this stuff for them. Mm-hmm. And the jinn's the one in control of the human because he's making them do, like, dumb as heck things. <laughs> like, go and do pilgrimage around, like, the graveyard. Or, like, go find a rat tail and a potion of whatever. And the human honestly has no control over a jinn. If you think about it, like, how are you going to control a jinn? They're stronger. They're faster. They're unseen by us if they choose to be. So in reality, it's because the jinn wants to, because it's easy for them to do it. Also, another thing that um, I had recently learned was that Surat al-Baqarah is also used to ward off hasad. So people, before you go to sleep, just play Surat al-Baqarah in your house. I mean, even if there's no hasad, obviously there's nothing bad that can come out of just playing the Quran at night or just having it going. But I didn't know that Surat al-Baqarah was used for hasad. I thought... It typically it was just our ma'awadat and then the ruqiyah for when they're kind of trying to test if you if you have any evil eye on you. So that's also good. I to mean, know. overall, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a means mm-hmm. to 
bad gin. So like saying "Aud billahi min shaitan al rajim" or saying "Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim" before we eat. So stuff like that should ward off like bad gin. So just constantly like remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala should <laughs> from us. I think two of the most surprising facts I've learned was one, jinns have their own religions. Like jinns can be atheists, jinn can be Muslim. Jinns can be Christians. Jinns can be Hindus. Like jinns can be any type of religion. But they follow our religion. They don't have their own religion, which is interesting. They follow human. No, a sh- Yeah, human types of religion. Yeah, yeah. And then another one is that they have families. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Humans. They society. have a lot more kids than humans do. So, like, um, I was listening to a lecture by Sheikh Yasser Qadi, and he was saying like jinns are a lot, a lot more than human beings on earth. Mm-hmm. And I guess because they don't really need to occupy a certain amount of space because they're like, like they're made from smokes. So they don't have the need to be like, oh, we need a certain amount of space. They basically have like these, I like sort of superpowers where they're not limited to like walls and stuff like that. They could fly or mm-hmm. fly. I don't know how it works it's really it's the ghost. yeah they really are but you know I did want to say you know how when we watch Halloween movies they like the American concept of ghosts is like somebody from the dead comes you know back to haunt you or come talk to you Islamically we don't believe that the people who are dead come back to earth oh yeah ghosts and so like I was like oh interesting because I feel like I've heard people talk about like oh I think they or I feel them around or something like that. They could come in your dream, but they are not actually flying bodies that come back to earth because <laughs> once you leave this life, you literally leave this life. You don't come back. Like the soul is gone. And yeah, the ghost is supposed to be the soul of a person. Yeah. Or like mm-hmm. the, their spirit. Yeah. In general, like I think twakiling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has control over everything at the end of the day should strengthen our faith and our iman and we shouldn't be too concerned and worried about like din or like hasad and all the black magic because at the end of the day it's in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands and I feel like as long as we have like firm faith and we make dua and do our you know we recite our Quran and we ask Allah subhanahu for protection we should be fine so like don't get too involved with it mm-hmm. or, like too mm-hmm. oh let me do more research and it, it it's too yeah just stay away if it gives you comfort Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to Give dawa to the jinn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah and so it, was, it was a problem for them, humans and the jinn. Yeah. I guess more specific to the jinn, though. I know they can take human form, but can they actually enter a human being? Yeah, yeah. they can. So but they can possess us? Yeah, they could. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they could possess. They could turn into a human form and animal form, too. They there's a hadith that says they like to turn into dogs and snakes, but that's not the only two animals that they could turn into. But they do. They could possess humans. Oh. Animals. You might have talked to a jinn before. Like, they could make themselves look like somebody and act like you. And that's the thing that's scary. They literally oh, didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they could. They really could change themselves. Yeah. And I could, I'm like, oh, holy, you said this to me. It's like, I never talked to you or said that. And it could be. A jinn pretending to be you. No, really. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. I yeah. see. That was like the, some of the examples that I heard from Sheikh Sheikh Yasser Qadi. And I'm like, that's crazy. And he was saying like, you know how like sometimes you like have some a missing item randomly? Like they could take stuff. <laughs> socks. That's <laughs> they what I'm going to say. They're in the washer. They eat up the socks or the dryer. <laughs> say bismillah yeah. before you eat. Say al shaitan al-rajim. Like, okay. like Fuck it out, like, out of your house. I have the craziest lost story. And let me tell you why it's crazy. And maybe a jinn did take my thing. I was in Turkey and I had a wallet, right? And I always keep it in the fold of my pants because I'm scared I'm going to get pickpocketed or something. So I'm like, no one can take it from here, right? So I fell asleep while I was on the bus. I woke up and it's just gone, like completely gone. And we looked throughout the whole bus. We asked everybody. We, like, literally went top to bottom with the bus and nothing, right? So I went, I felt so depressed because it was all my money. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it was a lot of money. So I made a lot of dua and I was praying for it. And the next day, the first second we went on the bus, it was on the floor. 
just right there. And I'm like, Allah made the jinn give it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> because there was no way, like the bus was closed all night until we got on there. And I wanted to be the first one on there because I'm like, what if I miss something? Who knows? And it literally was right there, just mm-hmm. on the floor. That's, yeah, that's suspicious. Yeah, but the thing that's is, you never that. know. You never yeah. know. Yeah, you no, no, know. no. I feel like that was definitely, that was, that was suspicious. It's funny how you mentioned they like to turn into snakes and dogs because everyone knows that a black cat is superstitious. <laughs> oh, but that's not true. We're not can, can can be like man or superstition. That's I know. I was gonna say how those are not Islamic to believe in like a broken mirror or whatever, like a, a horseshoe for luck. But black cat, everyone thinks they're like bad luck. Every time I see one, I'm like Bismillah. Like I, I. Yeah. <laughs> I think being raised in America and watching Halloween movies has me thinking, like, if I see a black cat, and I'm, Bismillah. Rahim, I'm like, oh my God, that's a shaitan. Like, I think, I'm like, inshallah khair. But again, I didn't really know this, but now I was like, oh, this is this is not Islam. This is more so like, I'm um, like Western. Yeah. But Yasir Qadi did mention in his lecture that they do like to turn into black animals, though, too. So a black cat could. And they yeah. also mentioned a black crow. And they said if a donkey neighs, then you should say Bismillah and A'udhu Billah because apparently a donkey can sense jinn. Oh, I don't know. We had a black cat, though, as a cat. I'm pretty sure that cat was a jinn. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. That cat was creepy. It was a beautiful cat. But, um, subhanAllah, how we, this kind of goes back to the whole idea of just having tawakul and having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the, as potent as black magic could be like sahid or hasad or anything like that all it takes is the word of Allah found out to make it okay like subhanallah how people like do potions and they do all this crazy stuff they sell parts of their soul to the jinn to have like this power and all it takes is like for your sheikh to come and read ayat from the quran and it's like yeah. imagine okay. the amount of hate and like evilness i'm yeah. human have like i just don't get it because i would never ever like want to deal with that stuff i would never want to wish I don't care what you did to me like i just can't understand or wrap my head around somebody that has the courage not even courage like how evil can you possibly be to wish harm on somebody like i'm so that's not even evil that's like cynicism like that's cynical like you're not it's not anger that's like that's something that's completely is it constricted to hurting other people? They can also use that magic to benefit themselves. Like for like instance, power, money. Yeah, because uh jinn live a lot longer than us, so they live like thousands of years. So they know where hidden treasure is and stuff. So if you ask and you communicate with them, they'll tell you. So it's not necessarily only to harm other people, but also to benefit like yourself. So if you look at it from that angle, I could see why a lot more people would do it. Mm-hmm. I think I would ever do it, but I can see why. Like, I can understand you. <laughs> I guess along the same lines, though, jinn have a li- limitation to they can tell the present and the past, but they're not able to tell the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of these fortune tellers, like, we think, like, oh, they can tell the future. Or they know me so well. If they do communicate with the jinn, they can know you because of what the jinn is able to gather from you present and in the past. But mm-hmm. anything that's said about the future or you will do this or you will have this is not true. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I heard, I mean, you always hear crazy stories, but I heard from this, that one sheikh. So there was just this newly married couple. Okay, first of all, as creepy as Jin stories are, I feel like hearing these experiences is interesting. Like, I like hearing the stories because it just blows my mind how these things happen and how all it takes again is just for the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then like things go back to normal, which is super crazy. But there was one story that I heard in particular where it was first this couple, I guess, they were newly married, they were so in love, like, you know, everything was working out for them. Um, they moved into a home together, like they were growing their family. And then suddenly they were just always so upset. Like they just couldn't agree on anything. They just Nothing made sense. Um, they were always fighting, always arguing. They were never happy. They didn't know what the problem was. So they had called the sheikh to like, you know, come to their house because they're like, how did we completely 180? Now we can't stand each other. We still love each other. Like, what's the problem? So they had come into the sheikh 
at like asked the sheikh to come to their home and he had come to their home and it's crazy that immediately as soon as he entered the home he knew something was off like they can feel that type of like dark magic and that dark energy and he knew that something was off and i don't know the exact details of how the sheikh find out like what's going on or how they communicate or how they realize what's going on but he literally walked to their backyard and like lifted one of the stones i guess they had like a garden and he lifted one of their stones and there was like a baggie in there with like a doll or whatever type of magic that had the black magic and as soon as he got rid of it like the sheikh had to like recite quran or whatever and he wouldn't he even the sheikh even knew who had placed it there mm. but he wouldn't tell the couple because it would ruin relationships i guess it was like family but like whatever that's like well, so, that that's so sad already ruined <laughs> But he didn't, he wouldn't say the relative and he got rid of it. And obviously it took a little time to get back to where they were, but it literally like complete 180 with the type of energy that was in the home. My thing is though, this stuff is not like, I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I don't know how readily available this information is, but I feel like this stuff is passed down from person to person. So yeah. Like, I know you can find it online, on YouTube, like this stuff. Really? Like, yeah. Yeah, the whole, there's now a whole religion that um, believes in, like, voodoo and black magic. I for, it starts with a W. I forgot what it was called. Wiccan? The whole religion based off of black magic that still exists till today. No, I know, but this family was Muslim. Oh, so yeah. But, they had, but, yeah. But, Huayna, you can, if you look for this stuff, you can find it. Like, I'm sure there are plenty of people in the community that we live in that we're not aware of that takes part in these acts like it's not something that's like unheard of or it's been wiped off the earth like it's very prevalent today so i'm sure if you ask around ask the right people have you have you all experienced any like jinni stories type of stuff like we're here no you thoughts you heard stuff you're like are twitching <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's my thing i'm always in denial like something can like be picked up and lift like dropped and i'm like oh that was nothing gravity <laughs> uh, not to that extent obviously but like yeah. there's always I, mean, I don't know i feel like your mind can play tricks on you especially if you're yeah. home alone or if it's like raining and dark or something along those lines but i'm always of the type that's like no it's fine nothing's happening this stuff is not real yeah <laughs> Which is I don't know. I want to be like, oh, there's a gin and they're playing games with me. Like, I wouldn't want to think like that either. Especially when you're by yourself. I don't think gin. I think a human. I think, oh my god, oh my god, somebody broke into the house. So for yeah. me, gin, I think human being. Well, because your brain always tries to go to the most logical explanation. Like yeah. nobody hears a door slam and you're like, oh my god, gin. Like that's not. Like I feel like that's not the most logical explanation. So we don't go there first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's more like long term, and then I don't think I have I've had any like gin experience. Alhamdulillah, tabarakallah, a'udhu billah min shaitan rajeem. But I'm definitely like I definitely believe in the whole hasad stuff, and because I do believe that hasad could be so strong, I make a conscious like I make conscious decisions that anytime I compliment something, anytime I see something, I make myself say mashallah, alhamdulillah. Like I consciously try to make my train myself where. When I do say it, I follow it up with mashallah or alhamdulillah so that I can like, I'm not responsible for anyone's hazard and I keep myself well protected, like at both ends. Yeah, I think with all these experiences, well, at least from the story you told me, Malak, is like you really truly never know who's out there that can try and harm you. So keep your business to yourself. Like a, you, <laughs> not everybody needs to know every success or every triumph or every relationship or how your relation's going. Just keep it to yourself. The less people know, the better for you. But it's, it's also hard. like... It's hard for people who think well of others. I feel like people who naturally like... I feel like people who naturally think positively of other people, like they themselves are good people, have a hard time understanding others that might do harm or have evil intentions. Like for me, um, I can't imagine someone doing harm. And I always like even I remember when I was working at a, I was working at a non for profit, 
And I remember I was handling some membership money and that membership money would disappear. And I thought it was me who was losing the money. And then this happened like a couple of times. I'm like, oh my God, how could I be so forgetful? How could I not be so protective and secure my belongings? So I was questioning myself. Come to find out. Mm -hmm. By the way, I was like crying. This was not an easy situation that happened to me because I was like, this is an Amana that I'm taking care of and it, um, this money has been gone. Um, supervisors have been being so nice, but I was like, why? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if I'm the one who lost it or maybe it's me. Like I'll pay you for it, whatever the case may be. But not until a year later where somebody had, um, this happened to me again, but this time it wasn't the membership money. And I tried to get the membership money. I'm like, please don't let me handle it. Clearly I'm like irresponsible and not taking care of this well. Come to find out somebody a year later went and like went through my wallet, found my wallet on the floor. And so we looked through us to see like what happened. Because like, my wallet was in my backpack and we had gone to the law. Like what, what happened in between that? Um, that was like very weird. I'm like, okay, I, I wasn't near my backpack. So like, how is my wallet out um, outside of my bag? And so we looked at the um, cameras and we found a young girl, who was like 12 years old, going through my stuff and taking my cash from my wallet. A year later, I'm like feeling this guilty where this person was exposed. But I always blamed myself. I didn't think somebody was taking from me. I'm like, no way will a little girl take from me. Like, no, I'm being irresponsible. Like, I'm hiding my stuff. I'm putting it away. You know, I'm doing my measures. I'm like, how does I even know I have money? Anyways, so come to find out it was actually someone else. But in my head, I was like, no way. And I thought it was me. I was just being irresponsible and whatnot. But alhamdulillah, at the end of the day, I was well, I think it's kind of naive to not think that people would have evil intentions. Really? Just like, in general. No, when you put your stuff on social media, though, it's not like it's only like a couple of people. It's literally going out to the masses and you don't know who could see it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you don't know what position other people are in their life. What bad of a place that they could be that they're actively hating the position that you're in. You don't know, like, what if, alhamdulillah, you're so happy in your marriage and you keep posting, like, these photos that show how happy your life is and you have a woman who, like, is desperate to get married, is in her 40s, has never had children, and, like, you don't know what resentment, whether she wants to or not, and she's going to ehsid you. So it's just, like, sometimes just be private. Know that, like, just keep your good stuff to yourself and don't, like, overshare, even though we love to do that because that's the society we're in. <laughs> Yeah. That's just yeah. like a little girl is evil. I know, she's a little girl still trying to learn and things like that, but yeah. That's true. It's true what you're saying. It's like not thinking somebody that young yeah. in the community would do that. And that was me. I was like, that was the last thing on my mind that somebody had taken like it was a girl. For me, I would I blame myself for it. I didn't think somebody was going into my bed and taking it. I thought I was just losing it myself and I was just being forgetful. But for me, it's like even little kids can have bad tendencies. <laughs> But I, I um, definitely, definitely agree with Mariam. That's a really good point. In this day and age, we're so quick to take pictures. We're so quick to post. We're so quick to kind of boast. And sometimes it's not even just like being prideful or being egotistical. You just want to share good things with the people that you love. But um, I agree with Mariam. It is, it is hard to also see people enjoying things and then for you also not to think like, oh, I wish I could do that. Like, I can't imagine how many people have posted, like, they're on vacation. I'm like, man, I wish I was on vacation. I mean, of course, I never have ill intentions. And I always say, like, good for them. And, you know, like, they're taking advantage. But it's so easy for people to just fall into that. And then for people that are constantly on social media, like, that their social media consumes them. And they're constantly tracking what others are doing. It's very easy for them to fall into that trend where they're just like, oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had this. Like, why do they get to have it if I don't have it? I don't want anybody to have it. So it's kind of just like, I feel like a domino effect that can also escalate super quickly. Honestly, it's human nature. Like human nature has jealousy like engraved in it. And that's why we're told to fight against these thoughts. Like sometimes I'll have a thought and I'll be like, what the hell? Like my cats <laughs> don't fight with each other. I'm like, why did you think that? I don't think that. Why did you think that? Like, <laughs> what the heck? Bismillah. Like, it's probably the same thought. Like you're always having these internal struggles. Is there a good angle or bad angle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in general, like it's human nature. So to think that we're so far separated from those types of thoughts isn't like the case. Okay, but like I also think that sometimes people overdo it. 
So like, yeah. for example, so like someone's like mentioning like, oh, I got engaged or the, this good thing, but like they don't say anything or you find out another way and you're like, wow, th- I thought I was close to this person, but they're not telling me this. It's like, oh, they think I'm going to exit. You know what I mean? It can also go around that way. Yeah. It's, it's not to say, though, that you shouldn't share good things. Like, you should share good things in your life because God knows we all go through enough bad that when you do good, you want to celebrate. You, Manak, you share with yeah. people close to you and mean well for you, like a small group of people. I remember I was listening to this guy um, who actually specializes in uh, black magic and like that's his like focus area in Islam. And he said, he's like, I don't share any, I guess he deals with a lot of hasad and black magic. And he much that he's like, I don't share any good news or publicly announce anything. And he's like, I don't post my kids. Like he's very specific. And he said, yeah. he's like, I share with very little people. Like sometimes he even limits it with what he shares to his mom. Like it was so specific. I was like, whoa. Wow. Like, it's too much. It's too much, but I'm like, if this is your field and you're constantly seeing black magic, like you're being called and you're just hearing a bunch of people's stories, like that's your, mm-hmm. you can see how you could be overprotective. Okay. That's just being biased. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has knowledge on the topic. I mean, if we were more aware of, I mean, with my limited knowledge, I'm telling you that I started making sure that I always say, mashallah, alhamdulillah, you know, like, and my knowledge is so limited. So imagine where that's constantly what you're studying. I would be freaked out too. I would take okay. extra, extra precaution. But like, he's not telling things to his mom. Let's say yeah, mom, I mean, like, only <laughs> looking at the bad relationships between a mom and their kid versus all the other good relationships between moms and kids. I mean, he's, he's not that he does it. It's very specific and he won't always share everything. Like it, he's very particular as to what he shares, the good news he shares because of what he sees. And I mean, it kind of, it also kind of makes you wonder though, how important is what you're sharing? Like if you're not constantly sharing things that are good, like not everything good that even happens to you needs to necessarily be shared. Like you can have some things that are just between yourself or you and your spouse or you and your siblings. Like they're not, everybody has to hear about all the good things going on. Like, yeah, like you're engaged. Yeah. That's nice. Like, that can be a community thing because the community will see you out with your spouse, whatever, something like that. But like if you got your own a job promotion or something like that, I don't know. There's just some things that I feel like today we over exaggerate everything. Like not even everything's an accomplishment and not everything needs to be celebrated. So <laughs> it's all, you know what I'm saying? Like it's also if he feels like there's actually only the really important things that he shares. Maybe we just make the really unimportant things seem like a bigger deal than they are. That promotion is important. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was just, that was an example. Not a good one, but like, you know, you got the gist of what I was saying. I don't know. I just feel like you need to find the balance between like sharing and with the good people around you. Because yeah, there's a lot of instances where I hear like, oh, she's, I don't want anyone to ask me, so I'm not going to say anything. That mentality is also weird. For me, it wouldn't be that I don't want people to jinx me. For me, it'd be like, I'm still unsure about this relationship. Like, for me to publicly <laughs> announce it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is, I feel secure in my relationship while I announce it. But other than that, I feel like it's still, especially the way we do things, I uh, still don't know him. We're still getting to know each other. So I wouldn't want to really publicize it until I feel... Not so- giving people an excuse. <laughs> no, I think in general, circling back, that learning about the jinn and all the stuff that we don't know was very humbling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you guys have any gin stories? So, as I said before, I don't have any gin stories, but my mom does. (laughs) This is one that she's always told us growing up. Should I trap the light? Here, come on, we want to hear. Hold on, I should. Oh, can we put flashlights on? Put like. (laughs) Spooky, scary time. (laughs) You look. I want to put like. Oh my god, (laughs) Lila. Inara is so scared. One, I'm invested. Me too. Once upon a time. This was years ago when my mom first got married um, to my dad, obviously. They had were driving back late from her family's house back to their apartment. And they were driving past a cemetery. Dun, dun, dun. My light <laughs> flickered. Just saying. <laughs> the gins are listening. I'm like no. obviously scared. I'm checking behind me. I hate gin stories. Okay, please go. No, so they saw like an old lady, I guess she and she was like covered up, so she looked like she was in hijab, all black. 
black hijab, black abaya, everything. And she was just walking down, like along the side of the cemetery. So they slowed down the car and my mom's yelling at her like, khalti, khalti, you know, like, oh like you had to come on, we'll drop you off. But she wasn't listening. They kept going. She went and then she kept like, they just kept asking and being persistent. She said, she didn't say anything. She just kept walking. So then they drove off a little and then they felt bad. They're like, you know, let's go again. So my dad, your parents are like too invested at this. Seriously. Maybe that's why she didn't talk to them. Seriously. (laughs) Harassment. Harassment. No, they're trying to be nice. So my dad circles back around. My mom gets out of the car. She's chasing her. She's like, Santi, Santi. She puts her hand out to touch her shoulder. And then she gets like these bad vibes. And she's just like, right before she touched her, she put her hand back. She turned back to the car and told my dad, let's just go. Let me say thunder, Honestly, I will believe that story because I know your mom and she would not like talk about this stuff or she's not the type to get creeped out like easily or believe in gin. So that's creepy. Yeah, (laughs) it's a true story. And that's why I was asking. Like your mom and dad are pretty like. I know. And it's the middle of the night. She's wearing all black. Like. That and they, and they, were, they were chasing her. They didn't ask once. She, didn't <laughs> like, she got out of the car to tap on her. Like, <laughs> No, thankfully she didn't touch her. But that's why I was asking before if Jin can like possess humans. Because I feel like if she came into contact, it would have just like went inside her. That's so scary. Yeah. That's Honestly, so yeah. scary. They're good. She's just telling the story <laughs> 25 years later. <laughs> I feel like I would cry for a long time. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, hello. Yeah. I'll give you. But it is, it's definitely something that exists. And I don't, I mean, I don't think we're nearly as educated on the topic. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily knowledge that we should delve into. Like, I don't know if it's something that we have to know about, but you should just take your basic precautions. Like we said, the Ma'awadad, playing Surat al-Baqarah, like, Having um vikr on your tongue at all times, learning diet, learning new yeah, diets, and that's the cemetery do. or past it in like the middle of the night. Don't pick up people in the middle of the night. Like that's just something you don't do. Has it or not? Did or not? You just don't do but that. Um, she's like, old oh, hajjah, come here. The silence honestly is the worst part because even if you don't want someone next to you, like why are you why are you completely silent? Like that's creepy. My thing yeah. is like the speed change. The the ladies try to run or anything like that or. No, she was just walking. She was just doing her Like, nothing changed. Yeah. What boggled my mom, what boggled my mind is that your mom got out of the car. Like, I get trying to be nice, and then there's just, like, they were just just let her walk. Just let her walk. (laughs) Let it go. (laughs) Like, learning about this topic and doing the research and even, even hearing the stories it's so scary to me because I'm such a chicken. Like, I'm the biggest chicken. I don't do horror movies. Many of them know, like, don't do haunted houses. <laughs> like, I don't like to be scared. I don't know why people like to be scared. I don't know why they enjoy, like, horror movies or haunted houses. It's just weird. It's, fake. it's funny when you know it's fake. I don't believe anything's fake. You always hear about those stories. By the way, be extra cautious if you're doing haunted houses. You always hear about those crazy people that are, like, actually axe murderers or serial killers in the haunted homes so be very careful a chainsaw that turns real real quick did one last weekend no. me and Malek were gonna go into a haunted house <laughs> <laughs> to the door and then i fell and skidded my knee because i was so scared and then we lost our ticket prices <laughs> no it was it was really bad like we paid for the ticket we waited in line and then you know how they make, like, the entrance just creepy? Like, we didn't even get any... We literally did not see anything going on. We just heard screams, and we were screaming, and we were, like, holding on to each other. <laughs> and we just sat there, and we screamed, and then we, like, ran backwards, and we're like, yeah, let's just go get some, like, popcorn or something. It's not... We're not cut out for it. So it's just not... And actually, it's funny because... The other day was my, the other, 
like a week ago or something. I don't like I said I don't do horror movies. Like I've never watched a scarier movie than probably like um Hide and Seek, which I remember my cousins made me watch, but that's besides the point. But the other day was my first time watching that um the scary movie Halloween. Um is that on Disney so, Channel? No, that has Freddy. No. Right? With um with what's his name? Is it Freddy Krueger? Not Freddy Krueger, the other one. Halloween? The mask guy? Yeah. You guys. What's the mask guy's name? Is it Michael Myers? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Michael Myers. Michael Myers. That that was my first. That was literally my first time ever watching that movie. And it wasn't so bad because it was like made in the 1970s or 1980s. So the graphics aren't that great. So I wasn't scared. But they. my friends tried to get me to watch the second one and I refused because it's a 2018 movie. So I know it's going to be scary. So I refuse. But yeah, I just, I don't get the hype about scared. I want to laugh. I don't want to be scared <laughs> when I'm watching. There's a scary movie called Emily Rose. That's real. Did you? Stop. I don't want to see it. No. What do you movie mean it's real? Emily Rose. Wait, what what do you mean it's real? I don't know. I think it's based off of a true story about somebody who experienced like Denise stuff. I didn't look into it. I was just listening to a lecture and they mentioned Emily Rose as being a legit movie. And I was like, movie yeah. not to watch. <laughs> yeah, I would, I like to stay clear of that stuff. But um, anyways, if you are trick-or-treating or you're taking part in any scary festivities this weekend, be extra vigilant and extra careful. And I'm saying just stay at home. It's not even worth it. Just buy your own candy half off the next day. Keep it and just stay at home. <laughs> And there's no reason to be out in the cold and in this whole COVID situation. But, um, so this was fun. This was a little creepier topic. It was a little different. Um, but it was cool to, like, trade stories and facts and stuff like that. Um, we always learn new things when we come on this episode from each other, honestly. And we hope that you learn from us. Um, make sure that you are staying cautious and you do read your Quran, of course. Have always Quran praying. Have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart and on your tongue, and you'll forever be protected. If you, I just wanted to say really quickly, if you ever find yourself to be that type of person where you're constantly wanting what others have, I think you need to take a step back, whether it be social media, or the people you're hanging out with, or the people you talk to, just take a step back, reevaluate where you are, appreciate where you are, because they always say, compare yourself to someone that has more to you only when it comes to Dean, and always compare those that have less than you and everything else, so that you're always appreciative, so... Let's keep that as a reminder for ourselves first, of course, and then for everyone listening, inshallah. But thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I hope you had as much fun listening to the podcast as we had recording it, honestly. Um, We'd love to hear if you've ever had any creepy stories. Um, Feel free to DM us. If you don't already, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Modern Skeps. Make sure that at any point you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're always notified when we drop our newest episodes. If you ever have any topic ideas you'd like us to discuss, we're always open to suggestions and you can email us at modernskeptics at gmail.com. Sincerely, the Modern Skeptics. P.S. Boom. Boom.